From billions of dollars worth of guns, tanks, support trucks, and fighter jets to ocean pipeline sabotage, radical changes in global energy investments, and a new emerging geopolitical order, the Ukraine war hasn't just destroyed lives and homes, it's also had a considerable impact on the ongoing climate crisis and is even inspiring an emerging green cold war. Hi, and welcome back to our channel, where we cover global topics that affect climate change and green technology. Today, we'll cover the unintended consequences of the Ukraine war, namely how it's affecting the global environment in ways many might not have considered before. There's a lot to go over, so hold on tight as we explore the far-reaching consequences of the war in Ukraine. The Russian invasion of Ukraine began on February 24, 2022, when Russia started rolling troops into Ukraine. Other than the devastating and terrible impacts on human lives that war brings, a less discussed and unintended consequence of war are the global environmental effects. Scientists estimate that over 8 million tons of carbon dioxide were released into the atmosphere between February and September 2022 due to direct activities related to the war. And when you consider the rebuilding efforts, the total carbon emissions are estimated to be more than 48 million tons. That's more than some entire countries emit in a year. Sweden, for example, emitted around 36 million tons in 2021. This dire situation serves as another reminder of how important it is for us to fight climate change, both locally and globally, through peaceful collaboration. We can start by supporting initiatives focusing on renewable energy sources and carbon offsetting programs. We can also take action in our own lives by reducing our energy consumption, using public transportation whenever possible, and recycling as much as we can. As the Ukraine war started, gasoline prices in the United States immediately rose 40%. While some environmentalists cheered this on, since higher prices typically lead to lower consumption, this effect also had unintended short-term consequences that are less talked about. Higher prices allow companies such as coal and oil companies to reap higher profits and effectively incentivize them to continue investing in their existing infrastructure rather than turning toward renewable energy sources. It remains to be seen whether such effects of war derail the green energy transition. However, what is certain is that this conflict has created a situation where oil and gas companies are profiting from market instability and are taking advantage of higher prices to grow their bottom line and strengthen their market positions. The Ukraine war has elevated support for fossil fuels and negatively impacted climate change research. In response to the conflict, countries like the United States and Europe have experienced more significant support for increasing fossil fuel extraction. New gas pipeline projects are being proposed, the most recent being a new pipeline for Eastern Europe, running from Uzbekistan through Turkey into Europe. There has even been support in some countries like Switzerland for pausing or outright banning electric vehicle charging to help save on electricity. This is obviously taking us in the wrong direction as far as the clean energy transition is concerned and ironically ignores that electric transportation is significantly more efficient in its use of energy than the use of the internal combustion engine. Electric motors are around 80% efficient in generating motion from energy versus only around 30% efficiency of traditional combustion engines. At the same time, this conflict has also halted some research on climate change. For instance, ongoing or planned climate change research projects in the Arctic have been stopped due to safety concerns and a lack of monetary and human resources. This means that essential data about environmental changes and their effects are currently not being collected or studied. Without reliable data collected in the Arctic on climate and environmental patterns, understanding climate change and developing effective policies to tackle it becomes difficult. Moreover, increased fossil fuel extraction support and strange new politics around electric vehicle charging can lead to confusion and ultimately to more carbon emissions and air pollution, which harm human health and exacerbate global warming. The international community must come together to end the conflict in Ukraine as soon as possible. 
Not only will this improve safety and security in the region, but it will also allow researchers to resume their important work toward understanding climate change and developing strategies for managing its effects. Along with the obstruction of climate research and the support for new pipelines, the war in Ukraine has boosted the profitability of the coal industry. Companies like Glencore, Whitehaven Coal, and Peabody Energy are reaping huge benefits from the relative increase in demand for electricity now that natural gas prices have spiked. Peabody Energy, one of the world's most notorious coal energy companies, is coming off its most profitable quarter ever and saw 300% growth in its stock from the beginning of the war until November 2022. They are now ready to expand production even further. In the United Kingdom, six months into the war in Ukraine, a new coal mine project was approved for construction for the first time in 30 years. The reason given was the increased demand for gas alternatives in Europe. Truly a dark day for the UK energy transition and a decision widely derided by both sides of the political spectrum. It's clear that this conflict has been good news for the coal industry. The situation in Ukraine has had a considerable impact on global cooperation, with China, India, and the US playing significant roles. During war, these countries stand on the outside and weigh their choices, and are less likely to make decisions in other areas, and, in particular, to expend political capital on taking action on climate change. Climate change as a topic becomes ignored and drops on the priority list for politicians and, perhaps even more importantly, for national news networks and public discussion. This could have devastating consequences for our planet as global emissions continue to soar. A 2022 report by the international financial services company Lloyd's titled Shifting Powers, Climate Cooperation, Chaos or Competition, outlined three more or less likely scenarios for global cooperation on green energy technology. At one end of the spectrum is the green globalization scenario, a world imagined where state self-interests are partially put aside in favor of cooperation on solving climate change through technology, innovation, and trade. On the other end of the graph, they list the climate anarchy scenario, a world marred by a lack of cooperation and an every-country-for-itself mentality that could be correlated with the world of international conflicts. In the middle, the Green Cold War is described as closer to the status quo, that is, before the war in Ukraine. In this scenario, each country is trying to invest in green tech to gain an edge in the international economy over the other, but not participating sufficiently in collaborative efforts. So what direction have we been moving after the war broke out? Toward green globalization or towards climate anarchy? The war in Ukraine is definitely not improving the global collaborative landscape and is thus making the green globalization scenario less and less likely. On September 26th, the Nord Stream natural gas pipelines in the European Baltic Sea recorded a sudden and dramatic drop in pressure. It was a decrease that couldn't go unnoticed. After only minutes had passed, a one-kilometer-wide area at the surface of the Baltic Sea was suddenly bubbling with flammable methane gas, escaping from the pipeline under the sea. Days later, it would be revealed that the two Nord Stream pipelines had both been sabotaged with explosives by a so far unidentified, ill-intending actor. Did Russian President Vladimir Putin sabotage the European energy supply and decide to blame it on the West? Or did some other state actor choose to take away Putin's gas weapon to stop his energy blackmailing? We will likely never know. What we do know is that methane emissions are especially harmful to our climate due to methane's potency as a greenhouse gas. Methane is 25 times worse than carbon dioxide when it comes to short-term climate impact. The worst estimates are that up to 500,000 tons of methane were released into the atmosphere. Compare this to the 40,000 tons released during the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Mexican Gulf in 2010. Such an event has consequences for our environment, releasing high levels of methane into our atmosphere. As methane has been categorized as the second most significant contributor to global warming after CO2. This issue highlights the further dangers of wars, in addition to direct violence, there's also an invisible threat of unintended consequences 
such as environmental consequences caused by sabotage of civilian infrastructure. The Ukraine war has far-reaching implications beyond those involved in the conflict. It has created a political landscape that makes tackling the global climate crisis increasingly tricky. We must consider this when looking at the bigger picture and recognize how our actions in one area of the world can have a global impact. Hence, it's essential to continue pushing for political change, peace, collaboration, and action on climate change, even in light of these difficulties. Only then can we hope to make real progress toward protecting our planet from further environmental degradation. As mentioned earlier in the video, we'd also look at the war's silver lining. Is there a positive outcome for our planet from this horrible war? The conflict of Ukraine has caused a stir across the globe, with many countries and organizations looking to provide aid and support. But some positive benefits have come out of this challenging situation, particularly when it comes to environmental policies. In the wake of the war, many nations, particularly those in the European Union, where around 45% of all natural gas comes from Russia, have accelerated their climate policies and commitments to become more energy independent and sooner. This includes setting goals for renewable energy production, introducing subsidies for green technologies, and enforcing stronger regulations on carbon emissions. Officials from these countries are now making statements about how the conflict has spurred them to accelerate their plans for an energy transition. It's not just governments getting involved. Businesses and private citizens are also taking steps to reduce their fossil fuel dependencies and support the green energy transition. While the war has not led to a greater political emphasis placed on global cooperation regarding climate change, individual companies are accelerating efforts as they see energy independence becoming a new business model. 2021 was a record year for climate tech venture capital funding growing to 210% in the first half of the year compared to 2020. By April 2022, even after the beginning of the war, deal sizes and capital deployment have continued firmly, with an expected total of $40 billion deployed this year. The energy dilemma presented by Russia's war in Ukraine, switching to new energy sources or continuing to rely on Russian gas, is clearly impacting public and private opinions and driving more spending and investment in alternative energy sources globally. Ultimately, while the conflict in Ukraine is still ongoing, this period of upheaval has taught us some valuable lessons. While we might face an unprecedented moment in history with intense global conflict, changing geopolitical agendas and a new green cold war, we continue to see glimmers of hope in the actions of a few. Hope for peace, progress, and prosperity. In promising peace talks. In environmental policy proposals and in new green investments. And as we search for ways to protect and care for our planet and communities and for our fellow global citizens, we always remember that no matter how difficult the situation may be, there's always a way to get to a better place. If you liked today's video, please support the work by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing below. Thanks, and see you next time.